Hi, uh, we're going to look at um, how we can uh, select different parts of the image and uh, store those away for later use and, and record them. Now, uh, on an image like this, which is fairly quite chaotic, um, there are lots of different elements to the uh, image, and you might want to apply different filters to different areas of the photograph uh, to get the most out of it. Now, the problem is, is that uh, selection can take quite a while, so um, it can, and it becomes very complicated once you've got a number of different uh, filters running. So, uh, let's just get to the basics of this. Uh, let's just pick our selection brush, uh, just increase the size slightly. I'm just going to select this column here, uh, just as a starting point. Let's just hold the ALT key down and just take that back, take that bit in, zoom up on this area, just take this out, and we'll just reduce the brush size just to get into the corners. There we go. And as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward uh, item in this uh, uh, image, but it's still taking uh, a little while to select it. Okay, so once once we've selected it, uh, we might want to refine it. That looks reasonable. Let's just look at this edge again. There we go, and just down this edge. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this because that's not really the point of the exercise. Uh, but once we've uh, refined it, we can just apply it and we have our selection. Now normally you would uh, just go in and make an adjustment, let's say um, a curve adjustment. And you've got your selection uh, in your uh, adjustment there. You can see it on the mask. You can see the white pillar uh, just at that area there. And um, what we can do is just uh, alter that uh, anyhow we like. Okay. Now, if I want to now do another selection, I have to dismiss it and move on to another area. But I might want to come back or combine it with different areas. So it would be nice if, if I could hang on to this. Now, there's two ways of doing that. If I uh, deselect, if I want to get this back, I can actually go to this curves adjustment, which is using that pillar. If I hold the control key down and left mouse press, it will retrieve the selection, which is really handy. But in a, as I said, in a complicated scene here where you might have 10 to 20 different selected areas, uh, it can be hard finding the one you, you want. So. Another way of uh, keeping hold of this selection is to come down here into the channels. And in the channels here, you've, you've got your red, green, blue channels here. But when you've got something selected, you've also got your pixel selection. And what you can do is you can right click on that. And you can say create spare channel. And that's basically um, means store that selection. And it's called spare channels default and normally you would just go right click on it and say rename and we'll call this column. And there we go. So you can now dismiss that and you can now go selecting different areas. So uh, let's just select uh, the inner portion of this, this roof here, uh, this like conical uh, selection reduce that for the purposes of this exercise let's just take that out there okay we'll just add that in and take that away there we go and again I would just go to the pixel selection right click create spare channel and you can actually view it and rename it so we'll call that uh, roof one Go back to our image, deselect, 
come in and pick the opposite side. Let's just quickly do that and just make that a little bit better. You know, it's not going to be perfect, but this is the point. If you if you're going to spend a lot of time uh, creating these um, selections, you want to be able to hold on to them and retrieve them easily. Okay, there's another selection, and again. I would just come down to pixel selection, right click, create spare channel, rename it, roof 2, and press OK. So we're building up our, our various selections here. So if I want to now alter the roof, um, what I need to do is get those selections back. So I can just click on Roof 1 and say Load to Pixel Selection and it adds it in. And then I can go to Roof 2 and say Add to Pixel Selection. I'll end up with both of them. So now I can just apply an adjustment of whatever uh, method I care to choose. Let's just use uh, a curve here and just add it in. I can deselect and I've now got that uh, adjustment in that area and I can go back and I can change that just in that local area. So the real nice thing about this is that you know some images it, it can take a couple of evenings to uh, sort out your photograph and by naming your uh, various selections they're actually stored with the save file. So when you come back, um, it's very easy to just click through and find which selections you want to use. Oh yes, that's the one, the column, definitely. Load to pixel selection, go back to your image, and you can do another adjustment. So we'll, we'll just come into here and we'll bring down, uh, say, the saturation. So it's not, not as uh, prominent in the photo. So that's how you can uh, organise your selections, store them and retrieve them for later use. Thank you.